Hello and welcome to Neon Indicator Memory. A while ago, I bought 600 Neon Indicators uh, with the only intent of using about 10 of them. So, of course, I had to figure out what to do with all of these. And uh, I thought it must be theoretically possible to uh, use Neon Indicators as memory. At least one bit per Neon Indicator. And it turns out, it is uh, practically possible too. So, uh, there it is. All four of the neon indicators are storing one bit each. Three of them are off there, I've just turned that one on. And I can also turn it off. Then uh, I can swap neon. Turn that one on. In fact, I can turn them all on. Turn them all off. And there's no switching components here, so uh, the only switches are these physical switches. There's no transistors or any kind of digital memory. Uh, this block up here is just a power supply. That's about 92 volts. And uh, the rest is just passives that uh, don't have the ability to hold any information. It's purely the neon indicator that is holding the information. It turns out uh, neon indicators have this property of negative resistance. And in the case of a neon, that means that the striking voltage, that is the voltage it takes to turn on the indicator, is much higher than the holding voltage. So when I turn these off, they are currently sitting at the holding voltage. But the holding voltage is lower, so they don't turn on. Meanwhile, when I connect one of these and press the on button, it raises the voltage on that above the striking voltage, allowing it to turn on. And then to turn off, all you do is uh, pull the voltage below the holding voltage, and it turns off. For a couple of interesting neon effects, uh, neons are affected by electromagnetic fields, as well as light. So um, I have my electric soldering gun here. This is a uh, old school soldering gun uh, passed down through the generations. And uh, it has a kind of primitive switch in there. And it creates quite a, um, a spike of uh, electro magnetic interference. So what I can do there is uh, point the tip of these like it's an actual gun and uh, turn those on just like that. So that's uh, electromagnetic interference. For the next demonstration of light, I have this laser pen. It uh, has the reflective, I don't know, uh, pretty pa pattern thing. And you can see one's already turned on there. Uh, so if I just move that around, then, yep, there's the second one. But you can definitely turn them on just by doing that. And I can take off that pattern thing and get a, uh, a long range kill. For the final point, which might be interesting, let's have a look at the voltage on these in the in the four states or so. So here you can see we're in the off state and the voltage is 69. And then when you turn it on, that voltage goes down counterintuitively. So what's going on there is the uh, power consumption of the neon is pulling down its own voltage supply. All it's powered by is this blue potentiometer here, 
and it's a resistor. So it has relatively limited uh, ability to regulate that voltage. I can turn this off. And it goes back to the idle voltage, I guess you would call it. And then there's two other states, so uh, if I turn this on and hold it on, then that's slightly higher voltage. Because I'm still holding down the button, there's extra current going in. When I release, that goes down a little bit. And then when it's off, I can again hold the off button, and that takes us well below. We can find out these parameters ourselves, the holding voltage and the striking voltage, just by adjusting this potentiometer. So as I budge this up, I will expect at some point the LED <laughs> neon indicator will come on. Just on its own. There you go, that was about 72 or 3 volts. And now to find the holding voltage, I just turn that down. And it was right there at 57. Which makes sense, because that is the voltage it was sustaining while being lit. And for my final trick, the resistances here are quite high, uh, similar to the resistance of skin. So these two resistors here are both 330,000 ohms, 330k. So if I hold this wire tightly enough, or the other one to turn them on, then I can use myself as the power switch. You can see this one doesn't uh, keep itself on anymore because I adjusted the potentiometer. But these ones are just fine. And then I can turn those off just by holding this screwdriver. And since uh, we came to it, let's look at the way that you calibrate these potentiometers. So what we saw was that as I turn this up, there will be at some point at which it turns itself on, and then when you turn it down, it will turn itself off. If I hold down the on button, and then turn up, then I'll find the minimum voltage at which the on button will successfully turn it on. So that's one way to calibrate it. And you can see it's properly calibrated there. You can also do it the other way around. So you can turn that until you cannot turn it off with the button. And then hold the off button and turn this down. You see, we kind of failed a bit there. It's uh, a... <laughs> look at that. So uh, it just randomly came on. And that's an interesting property of these neon indicators. They have a kind of probabilistic nature. <laughs> there you go. So in this case, we need a bit more margin. So I'm going to turn that down just a hair. And then it should stay off. To conclude the video, I'll say I'll plan to do something else with this, like uh, build a bigger memory bank, and maybe something useful, who knows.